All right, this week for opening up our small business martial arts school, what we're going to talk about and focus on is marketing. How do you market your business? Um, and that's, that's going to be key to your survival because if people don't know about you, they can't find you, well, <laughs> your business isn't going to survive. So a lot of times people just think, oh, word of mouth be it. No, you're going to need more than just word of mouth. So you're going to have to do some marketing. Um, marketing is everything from making sure, we talked about earlier in previous videos on this, um, being in a good location. If you're in a location that's high traffic, you're not going to have to spend as much on the marketing. But if you're in some warehouse district because you're getting inexpensive rent, you're going to spend a lot more on marketing because you're not going to get much you know, walk through traffic, not drive up traffic. So that's one of your first steps in marketing. One of the things I did is like, um, if you look at my sign, it'll probably be my uh, YouTube um, meme for the week. Um, it, I have this big neon sign. It just says Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. Doesn't say anything else. Just Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. So as people are driving through, like across from me is like some Bill Miller's barbecue, and then there's like a couple other restaurants. It's like a McDonald's. So as they're through in the drive-through, they see Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. They know exactly what that is. It was like maybe they watch the UFC. Like oh, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. I know what that is. I've been meaning to do this. Maybe I need some self defense. I know what it is. A mistake I see a lot of people make is they'll put like their name up there, but it's not really clear what the business is. It's like you'll see the name and it's like, is it a restaurant? Um, a friend of mine, he's got a great location here in town, but um, he just did the initials. And he gets a lot of drive past traffic, but I think he would get more business if his sign was more descriptive of what he was offering. And it just says RPBJJ. Now I know that means Rodrigo Pinero Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, but I'm in Jiu Jitsu, so I know that. To the average prospective white belt that doesn't know anything about it, they would see RPBJJ and be like, don't really know what that is, and they just keep going. So I think it's very important to make your dollars count in marketing. And like for me, instead of it just being like, a reflection of my name I just wanted it to be Brazilian Jiu Jitsu so when people see it they know exactly what they're getting when they walk through the door so it's no no mystique sometimes I see schools they'll name um, their business and they'll have their sign and it's hard to tell what they're doing it's like is this a restaurant is this you know what is this like a friend of mine I, I bug him all the time because he makes he might he sells custom knives but all of his merchandise just says stomping you customs. It's like, well, custom what? Custom cars, motorcycles, houses, you know, instruments, you know, furniture. What? What is stomping you customs? I know because I know him. But to the average person that sees his car, that sees his T-shirts, it's just stomping you customs. Okay, so you need more information so that person knows what they're getting so they can call you. Key thing in marketing. The other thing with marketing is um, market where you're gonna get prospective customers. Like for instance, I spend zero dollars marketing to other students, other jujitsu students in the town of San Antonio. They're at their schools. I'm sure their schools are wonderful and I'm cool with them staying there. I'm not trying to get those students. I spend all my dollars marketing trying to get the prospective white belt. The person that does not do jujitsu, I want that person. That's who I'm looking for. That's where I spend my marketing dollars. And then I also focus on um, transit people who are coming into San Antonio. So military people who are transferring into San Antonio, people who are moving from other locations and they're looking for a new place to train. I, I, have, I focus marketing on getting that in front of them. But I don't spend any dollars marketing like at jiu-jitsu tournaments because everybody at the jiu-jitsu tournament already does jiu-jitsu. And if they don't do jiu-jitsu, then they're there at the tournament because their family or friends do jiu-jitsu. And if they're gonna train someplace, it's probably gonna be at their family member or friend's school where they train. So I don't spend any money trying to advertise at places like that. 
But I go to places like, especially when we start now, doing you know free self-defense training to the local Boy Scouts. You know, free training um, to some of the churches because now you're getting in front of more people. Um, there's a large homeschool population throughout the United States. You know, get in, get in front of the homeschool groups that can be a part of their PE curriculum. Come to train Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu with you. So that's another untapped audience that a lot of people aren't focusing on. And just, you know, like doing charity work. Like, um, shoot. I think next weekend we go to the Eight of the Silent um, to do a free self-defense seminar, and it's um it's um people who are um, deaf, and um, they have a school there, and you know we're gonna show them some jujitsu techniques. We was there maybe th three or four months ago, and so every three or four months, you know they invite us back. We come in there, and you know we show them some self-defense techniques. So these are the thing, some of the easy things to get in front of people that don't necessarily cost any money. If I'm going to spend money, um, spend money on your website because you want people to find your website on the Google first page. So invest in that website, you know, like because they're not going to the second, third, and fourth page of the Google search results to find you. It's usually they're going to try something that's on the first page. So you want to do the things that you need to do to be on the first page. And they're learning about website and you know what it is, how the algorithm, ugh, al my English is terrible, how the algorithm works to put you on the first page, to get you up in the search results. Those are the things you want to invest your time, and you may need to hire a professional to help you with that. Um, but that would be valuable dollars spent. Um, but take advantage of free marketing. Free marketing is like, what am I doing right now? I'm in front of you in YouTube. Absolutely free. The only cost is it costs my time. You know, I, I use my camera phone, so I don't have any high-tech equipment. I did find to get a speaker, you know, so I, my audio would be better. But it's absolutely free. I just have to invest my time and do it. But the more people that see these videos, they say, ah, oh, you know, that, that old dude, he seems, he seems all right. Maybe, maybe I'll try training with him. So if I can get in front of him in videos, they come to San Antonio, maybe they come train with me. Um, Facebook is another free. You know, do a face. Keep in mind, keep create a Facebook business page, but understand that your personal page is the page most people will look at when it comes to your business. And that is a huge mistake people make in business. Like, just a devastating mistake people make because they'll keep their business page you know pretty clean and uncontroversial and then their personal page will be littered with controversy whether it's insults talking about religion politics you know controversial issues of the day like if you go to the Saad Al Aziz Facebook page you don't see none of that garbage cuz I don't talk about it it's not that I don't have the First Amendment protection. First Amendment protection is just my protection against the government arresting me for something silly that I say. That's First Amendment protection. What I'm not protected against, if I say something silly or controversial on my social media page, is I'm not protected against potential customers saying anybody but them because I read something that offended me on this person's page. And you see business after business doing this. They take, whether it's small business, large corporations, they make this mistake all the time. And they, their CEO will be writing something controversial and be like, well, this is my opinion. It, it's not a reflection on the business. That's not what your customers are looking at. They're looking at, you own it, you run it, you just said something that offended me, I'm done with you. So if you're going to run a business and try to grow it through marketing on social media, you need to sanitize your social media account. And you hear about people all the time getting fired you know, at their job from something that they did on YouTube or Facebook or Instagram or Twitter or TikTok. Like, understand, this is real. So 
if you own your own business, I don't have to worry about somebody firing me. It's actually worse. They, I lose all my customers. I go out of business. And since it's my money tied up, that could end up in bankruptcy, in many cases for many small business owners. So it's like, no, it's in your best interest not to be controversial. So when people say, well, hey, you know, which, which social media um, outlets should I work on? All of them. All of them that are free because you're hitting dem different demographics. Like some people are on YouTube. Some people are on Facebook. Some people are on Instagram. Some people are on Twitter. Some people are on TikTok. So it's like invest your time create a social media presence on all of them and put in the work, figure out how they operate. TikTok is one I'm not on, but I'm on YouTube, I'm on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. But if I got my teenage daughter who understands TikTok quite, quite well, she could teach me and maybe I should start something up on TikTok too. I don't know, but um, why not do it? It's, it's free, take advantage of that. Um, so that's where I look at some of the things I look at. Also, if you're going to pay for advertisement, like I said, don't, it doesn't, there's no benefit in paying for jujitsu magazines or jujitsu tournament advertisement. I look at things like, um, like here on the military basis, they have welcome magazines. You can pay to advertise in one of those magazines. That means everybody that transfers in, they'll see your advertisement if they read the magazine. Um, there's real estate magazines. You go to the local grocery store here, they give them out for free. You can pick it up, all kinds of advertisements. Pay for a spot there. There's like children's magazines where um, they you know, give child raising tips and stuff like that. You can take out advertisements there. So that's an untapped audience. And like you've heard me say in previous videos, like here in San Antonio, there's over two million people. At best, Amongst the 25 Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu schools here in town, there's maybe five to 10,000 people training Jiu-Jitsu. And that's, 5,000 is probably much more accurate. 10,000 is like on the upper end. I don't, I don't think there's 10,000 people training Jiu-Jitsu in San Antonio, but there might be. Um, so there's, there's so many people, you don't even have a percent of the people that are trying Jiu-Jitsu. There's so many people that you can reach. You just have to reach out and figure out what, what um, what they're doing and um, how to get them. Um, another thing that came up that I advertised in, like the local here in Texas, man, people love high school football. Like it's serious business. It's like almost like a religion. And uh, the local high schools print an annual calendar with their football schedule. And people post that in their homes, their shops. So they know like, hey, you know, Judson is going to play Wagner next weekend. And they're tracking the football and they're at the stadiums and they're watching. You can, I bought advertisement in that. And so when they was looking at the schedule, every time they look at the football schedule, they see my advertisement. I did that a couple years ago. Worked out really well. Um, another coupon ads, I think I, I did like a, because I give everybody a free 14 day trial. And it was like you could cut out a little coupon. And I even had a guy, one of my dearest friends and students, it was about seven, eight years ago, he came in with his coupon. He's like, hey, here's my coupon for my 14-day free trial. I'm like, okay, cool. And he's like, no, like here's my coupon. Take my coupon. I'm like, no, you got the trial. It's cool. But okay, I'll take your coupon. I should have framed it. My buddy Pete. So <laughs> you're like, there's a lot of creative ways that you can market. Just realize that you're gonna have to put the work in to grow your business. All right, this video, oh, 14 minutes. My gosh, I, I talk too much. But there's so much to learn. So marketing, got a question, feel free to fire below. And if you got any insight on what you're doing, marketing your small business, please share. We'll all learn, we'll all grow. And if you need any clarification on anything, fire a comment below. I'd be more than happy to expand.